Okay. Okay. I'd like to call this River Community High School District 77 Board of Education meeting to order. Can you please call roll? Mr. Parrish? Here. Mrs. Staub? Here. Mr. Reynolds? M Mr. Henning? Mr. Haas? Mrs. Miller? Here. Mr. Gauck? Here. Mr. Wilkerson? Mr. Haas? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, do we have any agenda changes this evening? Uh, we do not. At this time, we'll open up for public comments. Do you have any public comments? <laughs> Please state your name and your address. Uh. My name is Donna Kiskin. I um, want to thank you again for going hybrid from right from the start. I applaud you guys. You've done a great job. Um, now my little guy is in grade school and he's been allowed to go back four days a week. So now I'm coming to you guys to advocate for four days a week for the high schoolers too. I'm not going to take a breath. Oh, um, uh, because the way I see it is we're looking at maybe February, uh, February, March, and April, just three months to give them a little bit of normalcy. Um, so I just, I think it's really important. From what I understand, I think it's just the lunch time that poses the biggest problem. So I just brainstormed a few ideas that maybe there's something outside of the box that you guys haven't considered. Just wanted to put it out there. Um, don't know if they're already considered eating on the ramp. Don't know if maybe juniors and seniors, if we can go back to open campus um, lunch hour that they used to do way back in the day, just as a possibility. Or maybe even a few of them offer to eat in their car. Um, the large tents like the restaurants are doing with um, some heaters in them. I looked online today, they're between $900 and $1,800. We've got the FCHS Foundation, maybe that's an option. Maybe parents would fundraise for it. I mean, I know I'd be willing to make a donation to get my kid back. Um, I, you know, it's just the way it is right now. Um, even maybe one of the classrooms who um, builds things, maybe they can help build a tent or something. So anyway, I just wanted to give ideas. I, I know that sometimes, especially in the corporate world, we get on one thought and we can't get off of it. And so I just wanted to bring those up as maybe ideas to help you guys think outside the box. Um, and then the other thing is I just want to remind you that um, we got to keep these kids engaged. I took a sales training years ago, and it just talked about the momentum of the, of the person. And it just said, okay, even if they absolutely hate something, that's good because you can swing them to loving it. But if they are stuck in the middle that they don't, don't care, they're never going to move. And I'm afraid that that's where these kids are going to get stuck. So I just really... I want to just keep pushing you guys. We want the kids back in. Now, I'm not saying that COVID is not real. I've had acquaintances die from it. I've had it. Um, so, I mean, I do believe it's a real thing, but I think the statistics are there to show that safely we can get back to school. I can guarantee the school is cleaner than my house most days. Um, and I just, um, I, I think, you know, there can still be an option for full remote for people with families that really have issues and you know, have immune deficiencies that they should be more worried than the average person. I, I think that should be an option as well, but I just want to advocate for the kids to go back, please. Thank you. Thank you. Cooper, did you want to speak? <laughs> 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 All right, we'll move on to... Well, else oh, to I'm comment? sorry, are there, are there any other... Sorry. Any other public comments this evening? Okay. We've all had a chance to look over the consent agenda for this evening. Do we have any additions, uh, corrections, anything that needs to be done? No. All right. So now we need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mr. Gow? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, at this time, we'll go to committee reports. Uh, there are none at this time. None tonight. Uh, student members report or student is not present. Did he, did he log in? Uh, yeah. Can you, can you try to unmute and see if you can, he can, you can hear him. 
I don't know what's. I'm trying to get it fixed. You guys hear us out there now? Now they can hear us. Do, do you want to see? If yeah, I can. Do you want to see if there's any public comments? That sure, we'll go back and, and ask if there are any public comments um, at this time. Okay. Um, no student members report this evening? Uh, no. Evan, do you have a report? Yes, I do. There Sorry. You go. I didn't hear you, so I didn't know that you were talking to me. But yeah, I have one. Okay. Um, so, just looking at academics as a whole for this week, obviously the students have returned from winter break and we're obviously still on the hybrid schedule. Although there are quite a few students I know that are on quarantine at the moment. Um, the biggest thing that's happened. I think was the National Honor Society update, um, and that's all returning members will not have to complete uh, service hours due to the struggle to find places to volunteer since everything's shut down right now. Uh, many places don't offer a lot of volunteering to the public, uh, which has made the 15 hour returning service hour requirement difficult to achieve, um, as well as the 20 hour service hour commitment for new members. Um, new members wishing to join NHS will have to complete uh, just five hours now to be accepted into NHS later in the year. Um, looking, at the, looking at athletics, there's still not a ton going on right now as all indoor group and sporting activities are still on pause. Um, there is some chatter. I know I've heard that sports will begin practicing soon. Um, a lot of the coaches have been keeping in contact with athletes via email, texts, and Zooms. Uh, just one example is track has been doing a book study uh, once a week. Basically, just all the runners are talking about how the training is going and everything while we're on our own. Um, but Scholar Bowl has started, and they've been doing virtual matches. Just some examples. They've played against Mascuda, Altoff, and Bubba Well, for like one and lost against both in our varsity or JV. Um, they do have the option to meet their teammates. The Freeburg uh, competitors have the option to meet their teammates in the library, or they can just play from home. Uh, the questions are read off by a moderator via Zoom. And the players can buzz in their answers via buzzin.live. Um, and then as far as performing arts, the band has been planning on doing some new, newer small ensemble music, but currently the music they have is stuck in shipping. Uh, so they've just been focusing on pep songs until the small ensemble music gets here. And then there are a couple of students who are getting ready for college marching band auditions, although I'm not sure who that is at this time. Thank you. Okay. Any questions or comments for Evan? Evan, I've got one um, during the public comments that was brought up about uh, urging to try to get to four days a week. What are the what are the kids talking about with the hybrid and possibly getting back more? Um, I know that almost all students are very open to returning. Um, I think that's what you said. It was a little hard to hear you. Returning four days a week? Yes. Um, I know that almost every student I talk to would love to do that. Um, I don't think that there's like, I have the friend who I've talked to, there's not been a whole lot of people that are like, I really just have started to hate the hybrid. I mean, I think it's continued to work. Obviously, we all wish we were back in the building with you no know, masks and prom and uh, homecoming week and everything. but. As far as I go, I don't know. I think people would definitely be willing to try to return to something like the four days a week, but. Okay. I, I yeah, appreciate your point of view. No problem. Okay. Um, at this time, we'll move to the uh, principal's report. Well, hold on one second, please. In one second. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Okay. Um, yes, we resumed um, school, um, hybrid learning on January 11th. 
Um, we had about eight students return from remote um, to hybrid after the first semester. We did have a lot of students that went out um, the last couple weeks, um, most likely getting ready also to try to you know quarantine for holidays. Um, so we had some come back, but we additionally had more that decided not to return. Um, as of today, we have 149 students that are full remote. State testing um, is going on. So last year, if you recall on the screen that um, we were not doing state testing at that time by the state, but we are doing it this year. Um, so the SAT for all 11th grade students has been set by the state for Tuesday, April the 13th. Uh, 9th, 10th, and 12th grade students on this day will not attend in person, but will have activities and assignments in Google Classroom. The 11th grade students will be divided up among the classrooms with the teachers proctoring the SAT is what they've done in the past. Students should check with the colleges they are interested in applying to for information regarding the requirement of the score for their application. There have been changes with a number of colleges and universities that are actually still requiring or not requiring the score. We are planning again to offer the SAT prep class for students with Mrs. Klosinski. That information went out this week. This will be an online class um, on Wednesday mornings before the online portion of uh, the 11:30 dismissal day. That way they can include more kids in this class. Um, and additionally, seniors that want to retake the SAT can also take the prep class. So um, that information has gone out. The impact of this test on our state report card in the future has still really not been determined. Um, so we're kind of have to wait and see if these scores will count or not. This year we um, retained the same score as last year um, for our, uh, being a distinguished school. So we'll see what happens in the future. As soon as I know, I will put that information out to you. Um, the Federal Every Student Succeed Act requires states to administer assessments in specific subjects and grade levels. Failing to administer spring assessments without an approved waiver from the federal government would risk billions of dollars in federal funding for the state's highest need students. Um, the U.S. Department of Education has not issued any waiver opportunities at this point. Additionally, the PSAT 10 for all 10th grade students will be held on Wednesday, April 14th. This is normally a remote learning day. Transportation will be provided for all the 10th grade students. All other students will receive activities and assignments in their Google classrooms. The PSAT 9 for all 9th grade students will be held on Wednesday, April 21st. Um, again, it's normally a remote learning day. We'll provide transportation. And then all other students will receive, again, activities in their Google classrooms. In all situations, the teachers will be the ones proctoring the test. With all tests, we strongly encourage our full remote students to attend um, and we'll keep students distanced in all testing areas. All students will eventually have to take the SAT, so if juniors that are remote do not take it at this point, they will have to take it at some point because it is a graduation requirement with the state of Illinois. Also, right around the corner, incoming ninth grade students, um, we are preparing to start the registration process with this group. Um, folders with the registration information, health forms, and school information will be delivered to the grade schools for students to take home between February 15th and 21st. The 8th grade meeting night will be held virtually on February 22nd. Mr. John Young, the freshman sophomore guidance counselor, will host this meeting and talk to the parents about how to look at the registration forms, what classes freshmen can sign up for. Links to the meeting will be sent to the grade schools, the newspaper, the school website. Um, we are expecting between 180 and 85 incoming freshmen in the fall. Um, just to compare, the outgoing senior graduates are approximately 145 to 150. So we're, we're looking at a definite bump next year. Um, additionally, with the registration information, um, in the past we have been able to hold the freshman open house orientation night. We were not able to do that last year. It is unclear whether we will be able to do that in March this year with the numbers of students that would come in and parents. So we are preparing ahead of time. So instead of just sending out the registration information in these packets, we are also sending out everything we would send out in a freshman open house night. So everything from health forms to extracurricular information to um, uh, ordering PE uniforms, everything we could possibly think of, we're going to try to distribute all at one time to the parents. 
um, so that they have a better <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so um, all of those folders um, will go again to every grade school, and then our students, we have a few from St. Joe's, Millstock, um, some kids that are transferring in that aren't even in the district yet that are, that are moving here. Uh, Mr. Young is preparing for all of those students. Uh, Mrs. Travis is preparing all of her information, and the coaches are preparing stuff, so hopefully we can get everything out nice and organized and, and take questions and, and get these parents connected and these students connected as soon as possible. You Additionally, last Sorry. one, all of our parent support groups, MADC, um, FFA, Music Boosters, Post Prom, we've asked them to also include information about each one of those organizations and contact information so that the incoming parents can get to know how to get involved with those organizations as well. So just trying to plan ahead and then hopefully we can get everybody back in here before too long and then get these freshmen off on the right, on the right foot. So last thing, this was not in your um, board packet. Um, this came out today. So this is in your um, folders. In an effort for our school to give back to the community during this time when a lot of restaurants and businesses and um, parents and families that have small businesses that maybe have lost jobs or they've had to um, make adjustments, um, our um, FCH athletic department is hosting um, a food drive to actually provide to the, um, I forgot what it was, the Food Freezer Food Pantry. Um, we know the Boy Scouts weren't able to go around and collect as much as they wanted to this year. Our athletic department has wanted to give back to the community because they have been so wonderful to us and supporting us and sponsorships and money and all kinds of activities and um, volleyball and boys basketball. We're setting up um, information to do some carry out nights and stuff like that with the restaurants. This was another area we thought that we could give back to um, athletics and, and, and some of our other clubs and organizations are also looking for additional ideas on ways that we can also, you know, give back to the, the, everybody who has supported us. So this starts next week. This is a food drive. It will also be a class competition. Um, the coaches are all split up on teams to try to motivate the kids. Um, everything that can be donated is on here or money. It'll go for a week. Um, the athletic departments are going to treat the uh, winning class to dilly bars. It's, it's a small thing, but they're going to get out of here, get out of here, make announcements, work with the kids, and, and really try to make this a, a success. So, um, if you have any information, any cans you want to donate, any money you want to donate, pick your favorite class. I, I imagine the senior parents in the room will want to support the seniors and right. support your own kids, and uh, we'll make a go of it. Okay? Thank you. All right, thank you. Any questions, comments on the principal's report? I have a quick question. Okay, so mute, mute your speaker. There you go. Okay, can everybody hear us now? Can somebody give us a thumbs up or something? Just let us know you can hear. Okay, thank you. Very good. Okay. Vicki, um, you had a question? Are, are the um, folders with registration information, is that going to go to the small schools like Millstadt? Or is yes. it going to actually go to the school? Um, depending on, he may mail those individually to you, oh, okay. or he may take them out to Millstadt. So okay. I say if not, I could take them at that February board meeting and take them too. I will keep that in mind. Um, so he will have it to you no matter what, though, before that freshman parent act. Okay. So I, I could be a courier if you wanted me to, because I know the, the three that are going to be coming. So. I'll call him in that thing. Okay. okay, let's move on to the superintendent's report. All right, uh, Jill covered everything about the, the start of the second semester. Uh, one, I had a little bit in here about vaccinations. We had a, a meeting with the regional office of superintendents and uh, last week sometime talking a little bit about vaccinations. Um, I, I also meet weekly on a, a Zoom with all the superintendents or a lot of superintendents around the state. And, <laughs> Just seems like uh, our area is behind on vaccinations. It seems like there are, are, are many counties that are ahead of us and teachers are getting vaccinated and uh, quickly. Uh, I do think that's also a stumbling block uh, for us uh, to get back. So I'm hoping that that's going to get going to go quickly. 
Uh, what I've heard is we're going to get a call, and hey, we're, we could be there tomorrow, or you you can have a teacher. So we're we're going to have to really kind of be ready to go when we get the call. So I, I have my fingers crossed. Have you, um, have you done a straw poll? Will the majority of the teachers yes get it? Okay. Yes. Um, I, we're probably about 60%, okay. I, I would say. Uh, the county was closer to 80% okay. of the teachers. The county, there's 5,000 or so teachers in the county, and there was 4,000 and something that said they would get vaccinated. So, and there's no mandate at all? There's no mandate. Okay. No. Um, legislative update, there was uh, quite a few bills passed. Uh, I don't know if the governor signed them yet. Uh, in the lame duck session. Uh, there was quite a few uh, legislative changes that uh, have to do with high schools, quite a few have to do with graduation requirements. None of those go into effect for the next couple of years. Uh, I did include um, some information in the packet. Um, so and there was other legislation that I, I'm, I'm concentrating on the, the education, but um, uh, as soon as we get more information and get more details, uh, we will um, I'll pass that to you guys as well. Uh, some exciting news, the, the main gym, the sound system was installed. Um, I do need to apologize to several teachers that teach close to that because um, uh, we, we tried to stretch the legs a little bit on the system and, and uh, played a little music and uh, had kids in the hallway. So I, I'm really excited about when we get to bring people in and um, have them experience the system. It is, it's just stupid. <laughs> just That's so good. so nice. And so, um, um, so that's. I, I do want to thank uh, Kurt Jeffers. He is from Border North Marketing and Icon Trophies. He is our, our guy that that uh, we leaned on for the system, and also Coach Lar. Uh, working with Coach Lar, he actually is committing funds from two different activity funds that's paying for about two-thirds of this. So that was uh, also very nice. Uh, IDPH, uh, IHSA um, update, an update with no update. They had a meeting this week. Uh, not a whole lot was said. Uh, there are a couple regions that are allowed to start practicing. Uh, Southern Illinois was one of those. We are not included in that. That's Carbondale up through uh, the eastern part of the state, Mount Vernon. Um, there is another meeting on the 27th. Time's running out. I'm not exactly sure how they're going to get this done. I talk, uh, talked to Coach Lar this morning. He seemed uh, a little optimistic that they, they're going to make an announcement on the 27th, but lots of rumors, but nothing concrete as of yet. Um, second floor update. Uh, we had a meeting um, Wednesday actually meeting last week and we had another meeting Wednesday. Uh, Mr. Alt has been on the last couple meetings. Um, he has been getting uh, documentation for the E-rate applications. Recall that we are able to use E-rate money, which is a matching fund for some of the infrastructure for the, uh, the Wi-Fi and things like that. Uh, we are going to start having weekly meetings this week. The I'm sorry, bi-weekly meetings. The, the meeting this week is going to, they're going to come on site. And so we're going to do a, a tour. Uh, we actually are going to have a new site manager. Um, they've just switched some people around. So the one we have now is, is named Ryan, real nice guy. And so he wants to come. And we're going to kind of walk around. So our next steps are, I don't know if you've got notification for those documents assigned yet. Okay. So, so they are working on the uh, contracts. Once the contracts are written up, they'll be signed by the contractors, 11 different contractors that have the packages. And then those will be sent to Mr. Parrish, who's the board president. He will sign those electronically. And, and what he's signing is a, a, a letter of transfer to Peckers. So the contracts actually become Peckers. So then it's Peckers' responsibility um, and this is the risk part that, that, that the uh, construction manager takes on. So it's Petker's responsibility then to manage all the contracts. So they have to make sure that the contractors are following through, which is another reason why we went with the construction manager. So once that gets done, which should be in the next week or so, they will begin ordering supplies and, and all the equipment that they need to order um, 
for the start of construction in May. Uh, our record scanning update, um, our, our two ladies, Mrs. Kettler and Mrs. Gordon, that are our lunch supervisors now, have been uh, working uh, with Mr. Alt and getting that done, and they've, they've been making great progress. Uh, so that should, we should be through that room, I would imagine, by the end of February, which gives us plenty of time. Again, that room is the room that's going to be one of the stairwells to the second floor. Um, and that is all I have for you. Okay, questions on the superintendent's report or comments on the superintendent's report? Seeing none, we'll move on to old business. Uh, the first item is to consider the resolution to sell the working cash uh, bonds. Um, Mr. Crabtree from Steeple is on the Google Meets call. Uh, they actually went through the bond sale today, and I'm going to I'm going to let uh, Mr. Crabtree give you some good news. But uh, uh, the next step is hopefully the board approves the resolution. Once that's uh, approved, then we send the paperwork in. And the, the lawyers get involved and make sure the contracts are all right. And then the bond sale is finalized. And then the proceeds should be to the high school sometime in February. So, um, Mr. Crabtree, if you want to let kind of fill them in on the um, details of the bond sale day. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Uh, glad to be with you. And mainly, congratulations. Uh, we've come to the end of a long road. Uh, very successful sale today. Uh, the two main goals of the sale were to, uh, one, provide funds through uh, Health Life Safety, uh, which we did at $1.24 million for the projects. Uh, but additionally, we refinanced the 2011 bonds um, that was uh, a real benefit to the district and the taxpayers in that even though we actually did extend those payments a bit to manage the levy and make room for the new debt, uh, there's still a net present value savings of interest cost of $821,000. So uh, a really significant uh, savings there that obviously comes with the benefit of a very low interest rate for this uh, approximately 16 year borrowing, we're only at a 195, 1.95 interest rate. So um, just all around good news today. So I'm glad to bring that to you tonight and uh, happy to entertain any questions. I, I will mention, I think you all have the levy in front of you. The other goal of this financing was to maintain that 22 cent or stay at a 22 cent bond and interest rate, so we're able to do that. Um, and that only goes out about uh, 15 years, so a little a little shorter than we expected. So uh, good news and, and happy to answer any questions. Do you have any questions, Mr. Crabtree? Thank you for that, sir. At this time, we need to have a motion to approve a resolution providing for the issue of approximately $5,430,000 general obligation school bonds series 2021 of the district for the purpose of altering and reconstructing school buildings and purchasing and installing equipment therein for fire prevention and safety, energy conservation and school security purposes, and refunding certain outstanding bonds of the district providing for the levy of a direct annual tax sufficient to pay the principal and interest on the bonds and authorizing the sale of the bonds to Steeple Nicholas and Company Incorporated. So moved. We have a motion. I'll second. second. Yes. Here. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Aye. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mr. Gauff? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Next item. Uh, this is the second reading of a approximately uh, 10 or so policies. Again, these are policies that are updated through Press Plus. Uh, these are uh, identical to the policies that were uh, in the December 1st reading. There no, has been no changes. And, and most of these are updates to meet uh, legal requirements that when laws have changed. Uh, so, um, asking you to approve that. 
We have any questions or comments? If none, we need a motion to move to approve the second reading and final approval of the policies listed as presented. So moved. Second. Any motion? We have a second. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Stab? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mr. Gow? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, new business. Uh, first item is uh, to take a look at the 2021-2022 school calendar. Uh, kind of took a, a little bit of a different process. We talked with the other superintendents, but also did a survey uh, with the, the, the staff on, you know, what when would we like to start, kind of a Christmas break, when do you want spring break? I mean, just a lot of trying to get gauge them, uh, what, what their interests were. Uh, we were able to actually fit all of their requests into the calendar. Uh, the grade school did have an additional request which uh, we worked through. Uh, so it looks like the first day of school would be Tuesday, August 10th, which is the same day that we started this year, just moved one uh, calendar year. Um, you know, the details of it are all listed there. There is a copy in your uh, uh, board packet. Again, this is just a you know, an informational viewing, there, no, no motion needs to be taken. Uh, we'll actually uh, pass this, or, or at least uh, present it to you to be passed in February. Uh, but this will align with Freeburg Grade School. Smith and Grade School, as of right now, does. I have not gotten that they are necessarily the same contract. Okay. All right. Any questions on the uh, first view of the 2021-2022 school calendar? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item. All right, uh, this has been a discussion um, through just unfortunately the fallout from uh, this school year. It has to do with the considered eliminating spring exam, final exams. Um, I, I will say up front that I am a, a, a big proponent of final exams, that I, I think they are important. Um, I think they gauge uh, the amount that's learned in class. I think the 20% that's assigned to that is also important. Um, it really kind of emphasizes the importance of the final exam. Um, but as we have worked through uh, specifically the hybrid schedule and also the fact that you know kids are taking tests online and, and some of the difficulties in that, uh, the discussion came up with or came up of should we consider eliminating final exams for uh, this semester. So, again, had quite a few conversations with the administration, um, uh, surveyed the teachers. Uh, the teachers, about 57% of the teachers felt like because of the situation of this year, um, also going remote in May makes it logistically difficult to have final exams at that time, that, that it would probably be best not to have a final exam, issue final exams this year. Instead, what I would like to do is encourage the teachers to, um, you know, to, to develop some kind of project, to have, uh, uh, you know, consistent tests, uh, you know, chapter tests or something like that. Um, I would, you know, and, and then a part of this is absolutely bring these back next year, you know, you know. But this project or chapter test wouldn't be 20%. No, it wouldn't have no, the, no. the weight that no, I would not. Okay. Okay. But, you know, hopefully we're back to um, a normal year next year, and final exams won't even be a discussion. We'll, we'll implement those back right. in. So, um, there doesn't really need to be board action unless somebody wants to take action. Um, administratively, we have the power to do this, but I also want input from the board. If the board is adamant against it, then, then we're going to have to, you know, work a different solution. Okay, questions or comments? So, from my standpoint, hopefully we won't do this again in 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a, the right move at this time, especially with us going full remote that last month. I agree. Okay. Let's move on to the next item. Um, this is uh, an annual piece of business where we ask one of the board members to participate in the uh, student parent handbook committee. Uh, Mrs. Crunk's in charge of that and she will um, 
probably have two meetings where they will go over changes in the handbook and bring those to the board for discussion, but we typically have a board member that is involved in that. So anybody wants to volunteer or be nominated? You're not allowed to touch a nose because you can't touch a mask. All right, who, who wants to volunteer this year? No motion is so necessary. I, no, I was going to say, do we need a motion? We do not. <laughs> in order to jump on this. Okay, sounds good. Uh, do we have any board correspondence this evening? We do. We received, uh, you know, it was, it was, <laughs> this has been a tough year all around. We've had a few people uh, associated with the high school that have passed away. So, um, in, in those cases, we sent something. So, we've received some nice thank you notes uh, from those uh, folks. I don't have them in front of me. I can get those to the board if they'd like to see them, but that was all we had right now. Okay. Do we have any agenda items? Uh, we do not. Do we have a reason to go into closed session this evening? Uh, we do. We need to talk about uh, personnel, uh, real estate, and then uh, consideration of keeping closed session minutes closed um, from previous meetings. Okay. We need a motion to go into closed session. So good. Second. I'll make it. We have Dennis and we have Angie. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mr. Jack? Aye. Okay, motion passes. We're now going to go into closed session. I, I will come back to this for those that are online. I will come back to this after closed session. I just don't know how long that'll be. Thank you.